Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the M53 M55. It's the Tier 9 American SPG. This one's located on the south spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of Angelina 75 and it's her latest attempt to try and win the weekend lion. Let's see if she, how she gets on. Well, as you may be know, if you've been watching the series of games, Angelina's currently in the lead. She has a second class, a bruiser and a confederate, and she's managed to keep the lead from Talon uh, throughout the week so far. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if she'll actually win the Weekend Lion. I hope so, because she didn't win it last week and Talon got the Weekend Lion and she swore that she would get it this time round. And she's almost loaded. Hey, okay. let's see how she gets on. Well, enemy tank's been spotted coming up to the donut. The Skoda T27 and the IS-7. Angelina's styling in, but I think she's going to go for the 705. Rounds out. Direct hit. And it tracked him. And it stunned him. But he's actually taking more damage after he got rid of his stun. I think he's about to go out the game. It does look like it. He's only got 77 hit points left. Now he's got 23. <laughs> his game is virtually over. And Angelina might be the one to end his game. Nope. He goes down in the end to a Yag Tiger. But the enemy does seem to have the donut. They've got that end of the map. So Angelina's now going to start applying rounds into the enemy tanks. There's a 60 TP there. She's fully dialed in. Rounds out. Direct hit on the 60 TP. Now she's got to be careful because there was an enemy tank, a Skoda T27. He came to this end and I think he's on the cliff overlooking our cap area. Yes, there he is. You can see him right now. He's having a quick look to see if he can spot our teammates and also to see if he can spot Angelina. That might be what he's actually after. There's only one RC on the enemy team. It's also another M53, M55. And if Angelina fires at him, I think there's a good chance that the enemy RT might have a go at her. Well, the Skoda's definitely having a go at her because the shell just landed right next door to her. The shell that she fired at the Skoda missed. He's still there. He has taken some damage. He's coming right up to the edge. Oh, he's taking a lot of fire now. Except Angelina's got that horrible lifting effect on the uh, battle system. Oh! She got a direct hit and took him out. The shell went right into the Skoda. Yeah, she's got the, um, the standard... Oh, that's a counter battery fire that came from the enemy RT. It just landed to our right. So it looks like he's trying to counter battery us. Okay, so we know we've got a contest here. And look at that. We just saw the strip on the enemy team going up the hill. It's a strip 103B. It's a tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it. Angelina's on the Scorpion. Oh! And she penetrated him to take him out. 706 hit points. And that was a shell that landed directly behind us. So it does look like the enemy RT is trying a counter battery. Okay. This is going to be a good contest. Okay, so the Scorpion's gone down. She's got two kills. She also took out the Skoda. She's now aiming at the Doom Turtle. Rams out. Oh, it hit the rock face. That's unfortunate. Now she's going to have to keep changing position because if the enemy RT are definitely trying to kill her, then she can't afford to give them the opportunity. Changing position does really help. Up on top of the hill, we've got the Skoda 103B. Oh, Skoda? The Striv 103B. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was made by Skoda. No, it's made by Striv. Rounds out. Oh, and she got him as well! She got a direct hit on the Striv and took him out. 
That's three kills now for Angelina. That was a phenomenal shot. It was a blind shot. She fired at the spot where he was last seen, but she caught him just as he pulled back and it must have penetrated him as well and taken him out. So two definite penetrating shots. One that might have been a penetration shot on the Skoda. She's now trying to get a shot on the Doom Turtle. Backing up just behind the Skoda. No, she gets the cliff edge. She needs to be a bit further away to get shots on that guy. Okay, T30. Taking damage. Serious damage. He just took a round in the side. In the meantime, we're looking at that Doom Turtle. It's just behind the wreck. Trying to find a solution that works. Nope. Having a look. Can't get it to work yet. T95 is moving forwards. No, but he's taking damage when he does that. And I think he's taking damage from the hill. So Angelina is changing her aim. She's going to go after this, which is, I think, is that a... It's a Death Star, yes. FB215B183. And she hits him. 385 hit points with that one. Change position again. Okay, there's the Doom Turtle. Still sitting behind the wreck. It's a very difficult shot. More than likely going to hit the wreck if she does fire in that direction. Loaded. Rounds out. No, nope. it landed against the rock face actually instead. Okay, the T30 is right up at the center line, using the rocks for cover. We're one tank down on the enemy at the moment. I think that Doom Turtle has actually been quite effective. He actually has been hitting some of our teammates and she's trying to line up a shot on him. That wreck's still in the way. She fires in and it does hit the wreck this time. She is getting stunned on him though. That's the main thing. There's the T-30. Oh, he just killed our U-252 U, and he's gone. The good news is our Strip 103B up in the sniper's nest got him. So now we're homing in on the Death Star. Mark the target. Rounds out. It lands behind him, but it still splashes him and stuns him. And she's picking up masses of stun assist. And that was a well, it was the Knicks right next door to her from the M53, M55. He landed it next to her, did get some damage and some stun. We can now see the Doom Turtle is looking over in this direction. Now Angelina might be able to get a direct hit on him, but he's got 400 hit points left. So she's not very likely to get a kill shot with this, but here we go. And you can see the enemy RT who's over in the corner. We saw exactly where the shell came out of. He's actually over in Grid Square A4. That's where the shell originated. And the shell landed well behind her. But it does look like that Doom Turtle is trying to get a shot himself on our teammates. And the Bosch B is in front of us, so he might be able to help. The enemy's trying to get through the Western Pass. It might be a good idea for Angelina to change position. The enemy RT is still trying to get her. That last shell just landed a short distance behind her. If she moved to the bushes nearer to the cap, I think it might give her a better angle. In the meantime, the SU-130PM has come over this side. He's hiding behind the rock, which is going to hurt him because Angelina will wipe him out, rounds out, and she gets him. 
perfect shot. That enemy RT's trying again. This time he's going after the Fosh B. Okay. There might be enemy tank destroyer up there because... I'm not sure, actually, no, because the T-95 is still in the game. So he's the enemy tank destroyer. I don't think the enemy's got anybody up here, but I do think that the enemy RT is just below and to the left. He's in those trees just to the left of the screen. Angelina thinks he's over in this corner. I think you'll find he's to the left. Might see the tracer coming out any second. When doing counter battery, it's all a matter of patience and scanning the map, scanning the what's in front of you so you can cover as much as you can. You want to get the pinpoint spot where the enemy fired from. You might hear the the outgoing shell when he does fire if you're not covering that section of the map. But he stopped firing momentarily and he might have relocated. Angelina's relocating as well. Okay, she can see the 50 TP. Now, it is possible for Angelina to actually change angle altogether. If she was actually to go up um, over to Grid Square K3, she might be able to get shots, or K4 actually, get shots on that T, uh, 50 TP. But she's going for the lever instead, rounds out. She gets a hit. 385 off that one, and she's getting stun assist. Enemy RT's got nothing to fire at at the moment, apparently. That's why we're not seeing any impacts from his shells. There's the liver. Almost loaded. The 50 TP's out the game. We've got a two tank advantage. We just saw the enemy RT fire from the corner. Just went after our Shrek. In the meantime, we spotted the Doom Turtle. He actually came back and went around, and now he's over here. Now, we might be able to get a kill shot here. If so, it would be the fifth kill if Angelina gets it. Oh, it didn't pen. That's unfortunate. But we do have a strip 103B up on the sniper's nest, and he might be able to get that T-95 for us. You see, it impacted on the heavy armor right at the front of the vehicle. There's a kind of splash mark near the mantlet. So she's going to have another go. See if she can get this one. That's the two minute warning. And she's loaded. She doesn't want to fire just in case. Our teammates are moving into a position. They might be able to get a shot. In fact, we've got a large number of our teammates coming in this direction. So the moment he gets spotted, Angelina's going to have a chance. But it's going to be very, very, very quick. Oh, no, she's lost the chance. Unfortunately, he pulled back too far. He's been spotted. In fact, the 60 TP's been spotted as well. And now Angelina has the chance to... Go over to the other side of the battlefield and get rid of that enemy RT. The, the Doom Turtle's gone. The 60 TP's gone. Now it's just the enemy RT. The guy who's been firing shells at Angelina. Okay. She's gone to the aim. Now he's in the bushes to the left. There you go. Dialed in. And oh, he goes down before she can shoot. But it's game over. Here's the end of battle results. And that was the first class tanker for Angelina 75 in the M53 M55. She managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. She got four exactly. 
She also got a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, she got nine. And her win eight on this one was Super Unicum Standard with 3,476. So a very good game indeed. Let's have a look at team score. Well, she didn't get the highest damage in the game. That actually went to the 60 TP on the enemy team, who picked up a high caliber for 7,750 hit points of damage, but he was on the losing team. The second highest damage went to our strip 103B, who got a confederate and 5,074 hit points. And in third place on damage was the T54E1 on the enemy team with 3,068 hit points. Angelina picked up 2,761, and only two members of the enemy team actually scored more than Angelina, so she's in fifth place on damage. When it came to kills, though, Angelina shared the top spot with the Fosh B on her team. They both had four kills apiece. Three kills went to the 60 TP on the enemy team, and two kills went to the Strip 103B and the Yag Tiger. When it came to base XP, it was the Shrek who managed to come out on top on that one. So 1,162 experience points to him. 1100 to the TL7 and Angelina got 1002 so only three players managed to get over a thousand and Angelina was one of them uh, and the next highest score after that was the BZ176 with 937. Angelina fired 16 rounds in that game she got 10 direct hits on the enemy and two penetrating shots just like I thought she did so she must have penetrated the scorpion as one of them and uh, let's have a look there's the scorpion yes she penetrated him for 706 and i suspect she penetrated no she didn't penetrate the t27 so it must have been the su 130 pm instead yeah she got a penetrating shot for 55 hit points on that one they've got very thin armor so if you hit us an su 130 pm you normally go straight through him she also got 10 splashes Damage of 2,761 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. She did receive one hit by way of splash. Yes, the shell landed right next door to her from the enemy SPG. And I did say it was in the bushes to the left, but uh, Angelina was very reluctant to fire until she got a, a confirmed sighting. I think he actually did pull slightly forward for those last few shots. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, four were killed, 1,551 hit points of stun assist off nine stuns. Now, she earned a profit from the game of 59,076 credits, and she also took away 3,006 XP, but I think what she's also done is she may have cl clocked up the victory that's actually going to take away or get the Weekend Lion, because this was much better than the last lead she had with the Hummel, two uh, a second class tanker, bruiser and confederate. Well, this time having a first class means that she's taken the lead from that last game. Because even though she didn't get the confederate medal, it is a first class and that beats the second class. So, Angelina is very definitely in the lead and Talon's going to have to pull something out the hat if he's going to get the weekend line. Now, he has sent a replay in, so let's see that one right now. Here's the second battle and Talon's in the 2-1-2-A on the west spawn of Airfield. Game on. Well, he started much further over, near the south actually. And well, he's going to have to motor if he wants to get to a good position. So he starts shooting at the enemy tanks as they enter the alleyways in the centre of the map. Yes, they've changed the map all around, so it's actually more difficult now for RT to get shots on the enemy. And I think that was uh, one of the reasons why they changed it the way they did, because, yes, yeah, some of the uh, tank drivers were probably complaining that it was too easy for RT to get good shots on them. Okay, he's ready to go. Talon likes the 212A, certainly generates a lot of damage on the enemy. And he's just spotted an enemy tank. It's the Scorpion over near the cap area. He's dialing in as fast as he can. Unfortunately, he loses sight of the enemy before he was fully dialed in. And he didn't want to chance a shot, but he fires one in anyway. Well, the enemy is trying to counter battery him straight off the mark. So he knows that the best place to get shots on the enemy is actually near that bush. And he was looking in this direction. 
but he's wasted his shell while Talon did at least have a chance to get a shot on the Scorpion. Okay, to the north we've got a Lorraine 40 ton hiding behind that rock. He's landed in the tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks in it, so extra XP is possible by getting tier 10s. Oh, we got a direct hit! Wow, that was a really good shot. And the enemy RT is firing at him again. And misses because Talon relocated after the shot and the enemy fired at the bush instead of firing at Talon. So he got it wrong. And he's got stun assist as well. Loads of stun assist off that Lorraine 40 ton. Okay, next target's a gorilla. The gorilla 15. Mark the spot. Rounds out. And he hit him. Another direct hit. Now he's changing position by moving sideways. Let's see if the enemy RT tries to counter battery him again. I don't think they will actually. More than likely they will say well, it's a wasted effort. In fact, the enemy RT is now aiming to the north of the map. He's trying to go after our tanks. Yes, yeah, so it looks like he's fired in the direction of our Udis. And the Lorraine 40 ton was eventually wiped out. So we're going after the spot where the gorilla was last seen. Rounds out. Well, if he was there, he's been splashed. But I'm wondering if he was. So Talon's changing position. No counter battery fire. Okay, he can shoot straight down this alley now. And he's just spotted a Jaeguru coming out from behind that rock. There he is. Okay, he just fired. Gets a direct hit. 361 hit points and he's changing position straight away. You see, um, you don't have to move straight away. Uh, as some people say, oh, I have to fire and not look at what my shell does and relocate immediately you can actually watch the shells see what it does and then look away and there we can see the enemy RT is actually firing at our object 140 you get very useful information by watching to see what happens to the full shot okay fires at TVP bit late We're two up on the enemy at the moment. This is turning out to be quite a good game. Okay, there's the TVP T, uh, BTU that we fired at. The enemy RT is still focusing on our object 140. We're aiming where we last saw the TV, TVP. And I'm not sure if he got anything there, but well, we'll find out later. Oh, I can see lightning in the background. I should have uh, reminded everyone. Um, if you do see lightning storms in the near future, there is a, a website you can go where you can actually watch where the lightning is falling on live maps. It's, it works for Europe and also for North America. It's, in fact, it's very good in North America because they have lots of the uh, beacons, not the beacons, the um, radio receivers, which actually pick up the signal from the enemy RT. Oh, he just got a kill. He's just taken out the enemy RT. The GW Tiger was hiding in the bushes. And he's got him. He's taken him out. And that means now it's RT3 gaming for our teammates. They're going to be very happy about that. Well, I was saying until the lightning struck there where the shell hit and took out the GW Tiger. Um, there is a website called lightningmaps.org which you can go to and you can actually see real-time lightning. It's actually instantaneous because what they have is they have these uh, radio receivers which pick up the signal caused by the lightning and it triangulates the exact spot that the lightning landed on. There was a lightning storm uh, in my town about two weeks ago and I used it. I could actually see where the actual hits went in and some of them landed very close to where I lived. And I did notice that the 
lightning strikes were much stronger when I knew it was just down the road. And I even saw some other places in the town where lightning strikes had gone in. And I then found out exactly why they went in there. There was a lightning collector, or rather an aerial in that area. And that's, that's why the lightning hit that, struck that, uh, um, that aerial, simply because it was designed to take the strike. So yes, I do highly recommend going to lightningmaps.org and next time there's a lightning storm nearby and then you should be able to see exactly on the map very very close almost down to the street level exactly where the strike happens so if it gets very very close to you you might be able to work out exactly who got hit and when in fact you can actually it's so good you can actually predict when you're going to hear the thunder because a strike might go in in a nearby town and you'll hear the thunder a few seconds after you see where the strike went in. So it's almost like you're the god of thunder. You can actually tell people, oh, it's going to be a thunderclap any second now, and it goes off. Most people are frightened of thunder because they... Um, don't know where it's going to land next or where it's going to strike and they fear it but the fact of the matter is once you've got lightningmaps.org you know exactly where the lightning is going in <laughs> and she so don't fear it anymore because of course if you're safe inside a building or if you're in a car which is a faraday cage so you're not going to get hurt in that and oh that 257 just got nuked by a scorpion and there's the TVP VTU. He's just gone down to the T28 prototype. The Shrek's been spotted in the town. Before Talon can get a shot on, he's already receiving fire. Okay, that, that's the better place to fire. Rounds out. Oh, kill shot! Yes, he got it exactly right. That was on the money. Penetrated the Shrek. He's having a really good game here because he's already got 773 actual damage and 1,293 stun assist. Okay, going for the Supercom. And another enemy tank has gone down the Amex 5100. He fires the round in. And we can now see there's an enemy tank right up on the, it's the hill. It's the Hori 1. Now, the Hori-1 is a Tier 9 Japanese tank destroyer. There's the Leopard prototype. Can't get a shot on him at the moment. There's the Superconk. Let's try and him again. So you mark the target so your teammates know you're going for it, and that helps them. You've seen the Scorpion as a target of opportunity. He just got tracked. Yeah, we marked that target. Oh, he got a rescue bloom there. That's because this RT does have very narrow arc of fire. Only four degrees either side. The Scorpion G's gone down. Yes, eight degrees in total, four degrees either side of the center line. So the slightest movement can cause a reticule bloom. We can't see the Scorp uh, the Super Conqueror. We're only one tank up on the enemy at the moment. We have suffered some losses. Going for the Ho Ri. One of the good features of the 212A is it does have plenty of ammunition. You get 40 rounds capacity with the 203mm howitzer. And that means that you've got plenty to play with. I only wish they would have 40 rounds of ammunition with the Object 261. That would make it really good fun. Be blasting away all battle long. Okay, he's moved a bit closer. And to get a better angle. There's the Super Conqueror again. 
Now, can he get that shot? He's dialing in as close as he can. Rounds out. No, nope, went long. No shot on the leopard. He might be able to get a decent shot if he was to go further off down to the coast and right to the south. And that might give him a better shot on the Superconk as well. He's going to try a shot from here. We need one of our teammates to spot for us. He's, he's done the right thing. He's marked the ground to say, I'm aiming at that spot. It's almost like saying to the rest of the team, give me a spot, please, so I can shoot. The other thing I do, of course, is if, if nobody's spotting, I actually type it into chat. Tell them, spot. Of course, those players who do realize if they do spot the enemy, they're going to get spotting damage, which means... They're going to end up with more credits at the end of the game. So it does pay them to do it. Rounds out. Okay, now the leopard prototype just took a hit. But unfortunately, we just lost our scorpion. And the two minute mark went off. Now we need to get a better angle, I think. If we head down to the south, go around the cliff. At that point, we might be able to shoot from the rock right down at the southern tip of Temple Mount in Grid Square. J. I think it's, it's a J5. Yes. I think he's going to go up on Temple Mount, actually. Oh, no, that's. I think he should have gone up the other way. He's getting too close to the leopard, you see. He needs to be as far away as possible but to have the angles so he can actually hit them. Going up on Temple Mount actually makes him vulnerable to the Superconk as well. And the even the Ho Wreath 1 might be able to spot him from long range away. See, so he's got no angle on the Leopard from that direction. If he was down in the south, he might have the angle to do it. Last minute. I think our team have left it a little late. There's the Super Conqueror. And did he get a reset? He did. Rounds out. Well, it hits him for 275. But now the scores are even. And I don't think we're going to win this game. I think it's going to be a draw. The Leopard prototype is still fighting it out. And... Yes, I just don't think we've got the angle. And this is very, very dangerous going up here because it's likely to get him spotted. He's got no shot on the Super Conqueror because he's behind that, that uh, rock there. And that's it. The clock's run out. Here's the end of battle results. And surprisingly... That did not get a mastery badge in the game at all. Would you believe that? After all that damage, all of those shots on target, including a blind kill, and he gets no mastery at all. Not, not even a third class in this one. He does get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 14 in this one. And his win eight from the game was 3,265, which is Super Unicum Standard. But there was no mastery, so it doesn't count towards the contest, I'm afraid. He's still being beaten by Angelina and her first class and Bruce medal and a fighter badge. So, unfortunately, yes, this one doesn't help him. Let's have a look at team score. Well, you can see now the highest damage in the game actually went to the Leopard prototype. Got a high caliber for 5,123 hit points of damage. The second highest damage went to the Super Conqueror on our team with 4,573. And the third highest damage was our Scorpion, who got a tank sniper and 4,181 hit points of damage. 
Talon managed to get 2,896 hit points of damage, a huge amount of damage. He beat all but three on the enemy team, all but two on his own team, which means he's in sixth place on damage. But that's not enough to get a mastery. Would you believe it? When it came to kills, he's actually in joint second place because the top scorers were the Scorpion with three kills and the SU-130 PM on the enemy team. And two kills went to Talon, the Object 140 on his team, the Leopard Prototype on the enemy team, the Hori one, and the Yeageru. And when it came to base XP, well, he's actually in third place because the Leopard Prototype managed 809 because it was a draw. The Scorpion managed 790. And there's Talon with 544 in third place. So unbelievable that to get the sixth highest damage in the game, to get the second highest number of kills, and to get the third highest base XP in the game, and he gets no mastery at all. The standards on the 212A at the moment must be very, very high for this not to be a mastery game. Let's have a look at detail. He fired 19 rounds, a huge number of rounds, got six direct hits on the enemy, three penetrating shots. And remember, one of those was a blind kill. That was the kill on the GW Tiger. He penetrated him for 500 hit points. He spotted the tracer coming from the bush, took him out and gained a, a blind kill. He also got blind hits on the enemy as well. Um, and well, he's got two kills and one blind. And to get such a little amount to not get a mastery or to get a large amount again no mastery is un incredible he did receive one hit by way of splash the enemy rt did fire in his direction got it fairly close but not close enough to actually do any damage or get stunned seven enemy vehicles were damaged two were killed 1293 hit points of stun assist or 14 stuns he earned a profit of 21,098 credits on a premium count. He got 25 bonds for a mission achievement and 816 XP, but no multipliers, but no mastery badge whatsoever. So unfortunately, Talon has to go back to the drawing board and try and come up with something better than first class, maybe a first class with a medal or an ace tanker. Otherwise, it's going to be Angelina's weekend for the lion. And I think the strawberry butter is going to be coming out again. And of course, uh, Talon's going to have to make her one of his really great breakfasts. I saw it the last one. He took a picture of it before he took it into Angelina. And yes, very nice indeed. I hope you enjoyed both those replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.